Hello everybody, welcome back to another Civ 398 assignment tutorial. So in this tutorial we're going to be covering assignment 5 question 3, which is the last stress related question of this assignment. So you guys are thinking, yay, stress is done. Uh, no, that's not a good thing. Stress is typically an easier topic. And what we'll find is that when we go into the next topic, which is equilibrium equations, this is when all the questions start happening and all the students get a little bit cranky. <laughs> so enjoy this question while you can, because questions three and four, I mean, four and five might make you a little bit sad. <laughs> Maybe just a little bit. We'll have to wait and see. All right. So back to question three, it says a steel plate is subject subjected to a state of stress represented by the following Cauchy stress tensor. So just like the other two questions, we have a nice stress tensor, nothing too special about it. It's metric. And again, we only have sigma 2, 2 is negative. So I wonder if the assignment was coded like that, where sigma 2, 2 is always negative. <laughs> but anyway, the question wants us to do four different things. And as you guys will see, the first two things are related and the second two things are related. So a uniaxial tension test indicate that the steel yields at 496 MPa and wants us to determine if the plate is yielded using the von Mises yield criterion. And then part B, if the plate is yielded using the Tresca yield criterion. And so those two are definitely related and it's actually quite simple to do because we're given that yield strength 490 496 MPa, all we're going to have to do is find the von Mises stress and then the Tresca stress and compare it to that value. Now, the second part, which is also related, isn't too bad at all. You guys will think it's actually not too bad. Part C says, if the plate is not yielded based on the von Mises yield criterion, calculate the value of T, which is greater than zero, and the following additional stress that when added to the existing stress straight would bring the plate to yield. So the kind of the hint here is the plate's probably not going to yield under its current stress. So there's already the answer to part A. So what we're saying is if we add this amount of stress here and we look and we can see that there's only two components, sigma 1, 2 is now equal to T and sigma 3, 3 is equal to T. So if we add that T to our von Mises stress, what value of T will bring that yielding up, or sorry, bring that von Mises stress up to the point at which the, the plate yields? And then the part D says, is it possible to bring about yielding of the plate by adding the following state of stress to the existing state of stress? So our, our additional stress in this case is sigma 1, 1, sigma 2, 2, and sigma 3, 3 is equal to T. Everything else is zero. And kind of the hint here, it's going to be very obvious, but the hint here is going to say, oh, wait, that's a hydrostatic state of stress. And we already know that the hydrostatic stress does not contribute to the von Mises stress at all. So that'll be something that we'll explore, but the answer is going to be fairly trivial. So let's talk about yield criterion first. So this will be for parts A and B. And the first one is the von Mises stress. So the material yields when the von Mises stress, which is equal to this ugly formula right here, is greater or equal to the yield strength. And we look here and we say, okay, well, the von Mises stress is just a function of the Cauchy stress matrix, which are given. So we can calculate that von Mises stress no problem. And that sigma y at the other side, well, that is the yield stress. And we're given that's 496 MPa. So we're given everything that we need in this formula. All we're going to have to do is calculate our von Mises stress and then compare it to our yield stress. If it's if our von Mises stress is greater or equal to our yield stress, then yes, the plate is yielding. How about the Tresca stress? So the Tresca stress is very simple, but it has a trick to it that will confuse a lot of students and give me a lot of questions if I don't clarify it. So in general, the material yields when 2 times the maximum shear is greater or equal to the yield point. So the maximum shear, it's a very simple formula. We just take the absolute value of sigma 1, 1 minus sigma 2, 2, sigma 2, 2 minus sigma 3, 3, sigma 1, 1 minus sigma 3, 3, and we divide them all by 2. So the trick here is two things. The first one is it's 2 times the maximum shear stress. So if we look at our equation for maximum shear stress, before that we have a 2. So it's kind of nice to see, but as you guys will see, the 2 in the t maximum and then the divided by 2 kind of cancel out. So the Tresca yield criterion is more or less a function of the difference between sigma 1, 1, sigma 2, 2, sigma 2, 2, and sigma 3, 3, and sigma 1, 1, and sigma 3, 3. Now, here's the main problem that a lot of students will have, and this I'll get a lot of questions about if I don't clarify right now. You guys are going to go to your Cauchy stress matrix. You're going to take sigma 1, 1, sigma 2, 2, and sigma 3, 3, plug it into here, get your maximum thing, and then you're going to determine if it yields or not. And you're going to say, wait a second, Clayton, it's, it, says, it says I'm wrong. What the hell? I thought you said this is how we do it. Well, this is how we do it. But these sigma 1, 1, sigma 2, 2, and sigma 3, 3, these are the principal stresses. These are not just obtained from the Cauchy stress matrix above. What you guys will have to do is find the principal stresses or the eigenvalues of these stresses. So what I recommend, take the Cauchy stress matrix above, throw in Mathematica, 
find the eigenvalues and then find the differences between those eigenvalues because those eigenvalues those are the sigma 1 1 sigma 2 2 and sigma 3 3 that we need for this question so there's the trick here remember for the Tresca yield criterion or more specifically for maximum shear we want principal stresses we can't just take the stresses right from the Cauchy stress matrix above so that's the first part of the question finding at the material yields under the two different conditions as I said, chances are it's not going to yield under the von Mises stress. So now we have to try and figure out, OK, what is the value of T that will make it yield under the von Mises stress conditions? So let's look at our new Cauchy stress matrix after we add the additional state of stress. So our sigma plus delta sigma is going to be our, our Cauchy stress matrix, except for sigma 1, 2 has the addition of T and sigma 3, 3 also has that addition of T. So what I can do now is I can say, OK, well, I have this nice stress matrix, I can find the von Mises stress of the stress matrix below. So I just use my nice ugly formula. But whenever I have a sigma 1, 2 or a sigma 3, 3, I just add in that plus T. So in right here, I add that plus T. And the goal of this is say, OK, well, I know that this von Mises stress now needs to make the plate yield. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, OK, well, this von Mises stress is going to be equal to our yield stress. So if we look at our von Mises stress, we have one unknown, which is T. Our yield stress, we, well, we're given that. We know that is 496. Therefore, we have one equation with one unknown T. We can simply solve for T. Now, solving for T, it's probably not as easy as it looks because it's kind of a gross equation, as you guys know. So you guys can use your calculator or you guys can throw it in Mathematica. Either way, you guys are going to solve for a value of T. And what you're going to find is you're going to get two values of T. So this is why we said t is greater than zero, because what's going to happen is there's going to be a t that's greater than zero, as well as a t that's less than zero. So this question specifically wants the value of t that is greater than zero, because remember, we can bring about yielding either in tension or in compression. So that's why we have two values. Again, pick the positive one. Not too bad. Now, let's go into the second additional stress. So this is the hydrostatic stress. So if we look at our Cauchy stress matrix after we add that delta sigma well we can see that everything's the same except for sigma 1 1 is plus t sigma 2 2 has a plus t and sigma 3 3 has a plus t so all we can do is we can throw that into our von Mises uh, stress equation and as you guys will see in those first three terms we have a plus t minus t we look at the second term we have a plus t minus t third term plus t minus t well I can simplify that and it'll just end up being this and you say wait a second Clayton this is our original von Mises stress equation and t just disappears it cancels out every time so no matter what you guys pick for t in this additional stress case it won't bring about any yielding in the plate or more specifically it won't even add any von Mises stress whatsoever because again that t is hydrostatic the von Mises stress in this case is independent of this t so that should be kind of your answer for part d I kind of give it to you guys but you guys should already know right away it's hydrostatic it's not going to contribute to the von Mises stress and that itself concludes question number three. As you guys see, not too bad again. The stress questions are always sound scary because stress always sounds like a gross topic. But as you guys see, it's nice and easy. You guys are laughing all the way. Well, laughing until you guys get to question four because question four and five, that's when the fun starts happening. So that concludes question number three. Thank you guys all so much for listening. I will see you guys in question number four.